What if everything in modern physics is just a little off because the one experiment that underpins everything, the Michelson-Morley experiment, worked differently than we remember? First, let's correct some assumptions. In highly coherent monochromatic light, aligning the original peaks and troughs with the original partners they split off from isn't necessary to still wind up with an interference pattern. Even with drastically different arm lengths in an interferometer, a fringe pattern will still emerge. But this situation is highly undesirable for precise experiments because to start, it allows a sort of averaging out effect. More importantly, however, there's something called coupled oscillation that can cause waves in different phases to synchronize. Michelson knew this and avoided monochromatic light and went through great trouble to use white light for this experiment. White light, unlike monochromatic light, must be perfectly aligned so splitting up and recombining the light requires that the light travel exactly the same distance. Otherwise, it begins to smear out and eliminate the fringe lines that the experiment uses. Michelson used sodium light for alignment due to its characteristic double fringe pattern, which made exact adjustment possible. But he put the white light back in place for the experiment. This meticulous process could take hours, but it was crucial for accurate results. As the first American Nobel Prize winner, he knew the experiment would be invalid otherwise. The coupling effect, also called lock-in for laser experiments, utterly destroys the phase difference he was looking for. Modern replications invariably use monochromatic light, rendering them all invalid because they didn't pay attention to his methods. Michelson's original method is always overlooked in modern physics classrooms and even history books. Dayton Miller, on the other hand, was the only person in history that actually replicated Michelson's methods. He won the 1923 prize from the American Academy for the Advancement of Science for proving the ether with rigor never seen before. He used different devices made of different material at different times of the year and at various elevations to control for every possible type of error. In a first of its kind, he even used double blinding to make it impossible for assistants to introduce personal bias. Michelson's experiment was only over three days, but Miller replicated it tens of thousands of times over years. The answer was always the same and perfectly matched Michelson's. The signal is small, but it's there. It just so happens that the fact that Michelson and Miller both used open air is also a subtle but crucial point. We'll have to save that talk for a separate video about Fresnel's drag coefficient and how it proves a relativistic version of ether. So, next time you hear about the Michelson-Morley experiment, remember there were details we've forgotten that made the results more intriguing than you've ever been told. Stay curious and keep questioning the world around you.